This is an original Creality K1. I showed in a previous video how to replace the extruder because some of the early units had bad extruders. Well, now I'm going to show you how to upgrade the hot end with this new hot end from Micro Swiss, right here in Filament Friday. This video is brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. This video is also sponsored by Micro Swiss creators of the MicroSwiss Flowtech hot end for K1 and K1 Max. When the K1s were first released, there was a problem with the extruder, and I showed how to replace it in a previous video. In Creality, I actually sent out a kit where you can get a new extruder and a new hot end for these machines. I was going to replace the hot end in this machine as well, but it was printing fine, so I held off. And I'm glad I did because the K1 Max back here actually developed a temperature error. The thermistor was bad, so I ended up replacing the hot end, putting the new one in the K1 Max, and it's been printing fine ever since. Micro Swiss did send me one of their Flowtech hot ends, which advertises leak proof and cold nozzle change. Well, we'll find out because I'm going to install one on this machine. Side by side, they don't look a whole lot different, but inside, they're very different. The original Creality relies on the same old technology where the nozzle butts up against the heat brake, and if you don't get that thing tight, it can leak. In fact, I've seen leaks at the top of the hot end as well. I also found when I use this cleaning tool that sometimes when I remove the nozzle, I end up with filament stuck inside the heat brake like this. The Micro Swiss Flowtech hot end actually has the heat brake built into the nozzle. The assembly has a brass guide to guide the nozzle, but the heat brake is built into the nozzle, so the filament goes through the guide into the nozzle, but there's no place for the filament to leak. I'll show you how to install it, but first we have to remove the original hot end. Make sure there's no filament in it, and I also remove the PTFE tubing. You don't have to do this, but you can just pull the blue clip, press down on a black lock, and pull the tubing right out. The next step is to remove the fan shroud that covers the hot end. There's a screw on the right that you remove with a 2 mm Allen wrench, and then there's one on the left that needs to be removed. The shroud lifts up from the top. You've got to pull it out and lift up to get it over to two pegs, and it'll come right off in your hand. Then you need to disconnect the fan wire from the connector at the front. It should just pull right off easily. Grab the connector, not the wires. Next, we remove the silicone sock. Now this is tougher than it looks. It actually wants to tear, so be careful. Work it back and forth and pull it off. I was able to do it without tearing it. There's two connectors that need to be removed and they're hard to see and hard to get to. They're actually at the back of the board. So I use pliers to reach in there and pull them out. There's a little bit of glue on them, but they should come out pretty easily. There's one on the left and one on the right. There's also a grub screw at the back that you gotta loosen up with the two millimeter Allen wrench. There's two long screws, one on each side of the hot end, that need to be removed. They require a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench. I removed one side and then I went back and removed the other side. Don't lose these screws because if this hot end is good, you're going to want to save them. Now you can remove the hot end. You have to wiggle it back and forth a little bit. There's probably some thermal paste that's holding it in place. I did use a camera to look up inside to see if there was any filament to remove, but mine was clean. Now we're ready to install the Micro Swiss Flowtech hot end. It comes as a kit with some pretty detailed installation instructions, but I'm going to show you how to do it right here. Insert the guide and push it all the way up so the flange is tight against the aluminum block, and then tighten the grub screw to hold it in place. The heater element with the nozzle screwed in place slides into that guide, but they also want you to tighten the two screws at the same time. I used a rubber band to hold the two screws to the assembly, and this worked quite well because when I slid it up into the block, the force of the rubber band held everything in place. Then I just tightened the two screws, one on the left, one on the right, but I left it just a little bit loose because I wanted to get that rubber band out of there. I used a pair of side cutters to just cut the rubber band and then I could remove it. It actually came out in two pieces and then I finished tightening the two screws. Next we need to install the connectors. The little knob that's on the connector needs to go to the bottom. You can see how they look when they're installed right here. 
This is hard to do. You can't see. I was using a needle nose pliers. I actually used my camera to help me see what I was doing. The other connector, same thing. It's got like a V bump on it. That goes to the bottom as well. Just slide that into place. This one's a little easier than the other one, but once they're both installed, this is what it should look like. The copper wire is on the left, the insulated wire is on the right. It says 15 inch pounds to tighten it up, but it doesn't need to be heated to install. So I just tighten it with my fingers tight because I figure it's going to heat up and expand and that'll tighten it anyway. The final step was to install the silicone sock. It goes on a lot easier than it comes off. And this is the assembly, all complete. So now I just need to reinstall that shroud. Plug in the fan connector where it originally was and then put the shroud on top of those two pins and pivot it down so it goes all the way on. Now we just need to install those two screws, one on the left and one on the right. I put the PTFE tubing back in place and I locked it in with the little blue clip. I added some Creality Hyper Series PLA in red and I printed their 15 minute Benchy. This thing printed really fast and really good. So I'm happy with the results I'm getting so far. So after several prints, I decided to just remove the nozzle. And I saw little residue on the outside of the nozzle, but nothing in the threads and nothing inside the heat break. So it appears that it's not leaking anywhere. So it's working. They say you don't have to have it super tight so you can actually remove the nozzle with your fingers. But I had to heat it up to get the filament out first anyway, because I don't retract it at the end of a print. So I ended up just using my thumb ratchet with a 7 millimeter socket. I'll put a link to this in the description below if you're interested. And then I unscrewed it and it came out real easy. At $65, it's not the cheapest upgrade to the hot end on your K1 or K1 Max. But this is probably the most important part of any 3D printer, the hot end. So to get a good one is really critical. And to replace the Creality one, you're looking at $30, so it's about twice the price. But to me, it's a better design. This is just going to leak. I've already seen it. It's leaking on, around the nozzle, around the top. So I think I'm going to replace all my machines with this Micro Swiss unit. Whether they sponsor me or not, I like it. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.